Um, yeah, uh, this week we're going to have a bit of fun. Um, I think uh, it came out of yet yeah, last week's uh, tutorial as well, because um, the solution I found for that little planet thing that I posted on YouTube uh, made me think about doing uh, more dynamic paint stuff, so that's going to be a little fun. Um, so what we're going to do today is basically this. We're going to create some dynamic uh, tracks in snow or any other surface really if you want to use it. Um, and it's super fun to do. And it's easier than you might think to pull it off as well, which is really fun. So within no time, you'll be able to make uh, tracks in the snow, footprints in the sand, uh, even like ripples in water if you want to um, do that as well. It's, it's really cool. And hello to those who are here. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun to do as well. It's gonna be super fun. So yeah, it's it's uh, I'll I'll break it down first, but um, yeah, that's the idea at least. So it's gonna be super cool. All right, so let's start with a new file. So I'm gonna break it down and tell you how to do this process really simply, and then we're gonna try it with different things because we're gonna try and experiment with different kinds of uh, displacements and all sorts of stuff as well. Um, so it's gonna be fun. So I'm going to turn off the camera and the lights for now. And hello to those again who are here today. So uh, thank you for joining. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. All right. So um, what we got here, we're going to start with a basic cube and then use it as a collision object to um, to uh, sorry to keep things going. So. Um, so I'm just keeping an eye on chat on my phone because that's all I got basically. So that's all good. Um, so yeah, basically when it comes to doing displacements like that, it's all dynamic. So there's no texture maps required, no nothing like that. It's basically just objects with a dynamic paint. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to create a, a plane and we're going to scale that up and then apply the scale. And then we are going to um, go into edit mode and subdivide that a bunch of times until we get something a little bit dense, something like this. So we need the, we need the actual geometry to uh, displace. That's why we're doing it like this. So something like that would be fine. It could be less actually. We'll try it. We'll do it with something less like that for now. And then um, we're going to get this cube as well, and maybe subdivide it a couple times just to give it some geometry to work with. And this will be our test bed for uh, creating some dynamic paint. So let's check this out. So it's really simple to set up a dyna dynamic paint in Blender. I'm gonna go into random uh, se uh, color selection as well today, uh, so we can see what's going on. All right, so if we select the modify here and go to dynamic paint, uh, we assign this with a dynamic paint and then we assign this with also a dynamic paint. But inside the dynamic paint settings, we have this option to turn it into a, either a canvas or a brush. So uh, when you think about painting, obviously you have a canvas. So this will be our canvas, the, the, uh, the floor here, and this will be our brush for the displacement. And then if I push on uh, canvas here and push add canvas, we get these options. If I add on in the uh, the cube here, add a brush, we get these options. And the paint color is actually just vertex paints, so it actually co creates colors with that. But for us, we're just going to um, use it as a collision uh, um, a collision object, basically. So uh, check out what happens when we add a few options here. So we want to change the surface type to displacement. And we're going to add the max displacement up to maybe one. And here, uh, we're going to change it to proximity plus mesh volume for the um, displacement. All right, let's check this out. So now we need to add some keyframes to this cube. So I'm just gonna add some keyframes and movement here. 
So I'm just gonna go like this. I might turn on auto keyframing for this one. And I'm just going to go start from down here and then I'm gonna go up. Then down. So I wanna go through the ground for this one. Up. And you can see it's displacing, displacing already. Down. And we could probably do a few more. And then up. And down again. So let's check this out when we animate it. What happens? See how it's actually uh, creating displacement in the ground? And it's using the geometry to, uh, to break that up, which is really cool. And the cool thing as well, you can also just have it slide around the uh, the scene as well. So you just have it move around. And do all kinds of random shit. So if we play that back. One. It actually cuts out the ground as well, which is really cool. And if you wanted to, you can even smooth that out if you wanted to as well. So if you wanted to get it looking a little bit more natural, you could probably add like a, um, a corrective smooth on it. Maybe we'll see what happens. Let's see if it even works. Yep, there it goes. It looks a bit more natural now with the corrective smooth. And you could probably even add like a subdivision on it. On top of that to even make it look even smoother. And it runs really slow now, but you get an idea. Or well, if you didn't want to add a subdivision, you just add Shade Smooth. That should do the job too. So it just smooths out all those normals so it doesn't look as jaggedy. But what else can you do, I wonder? So we can actually add, let's add another one of these uh, planes. And this time we're going to go into the settings of this one and change it from um, displacement to water or ripples. Let's check that out. So in this uh, dynamic paint, let's check out this one. Let's go to surface type and change it to waves. And let's check that out. Let's see what happens. How cool is that? And it's super high performing. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. It is schmexy. <laughs> and you can even do like stuff like uh, cool water effects. So if you want to do like, you know, 350, let's go and add some more animation here. So this is great for doing like uh, waters, uh, boats on, on water, like rafts and stuff, or like a speedboat going through ocean. So let's add this. Uh, movement. So let's uh, add some more crazy movement here. And I can just animate it going straight back into the uh, the area here. So let's check this out. Play it back. How cool is that? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, because the reason why it's stopping, by the way, is because we haven't we've run out of frames in the uh, simulation, so we need to actually extend the simulation in the canvases. So we have to change it maybe to a thousand frames. And it's fucking awesome, isn't it? And it's really fun to do, and it's really fast to set up. Um, and you get really easy, good results straight out of the bat. So imagine you have to do a character walking in the mud or going through uh, a puddle or running through um, that sort of thing. Um, you can do some really cool stuff there. So we can even change the way that the, um, the amount of uh, waves occur as well. I'm not sure what this stunt does. 
the depth change. So we can actually increase the depth change as well with the uh, the brush. So we can actually make that like maybe two. Let's see what happens there. <laughs> well, I try to make it as, as simple as possible. Uh, for those who aren't, can't see the chat, I still haven't got my overlays up and running. But yeah, <laughs> it should be my slogan. Um, I try to make it as easy as possible. It's all about working uh, super lazily. So there you go, you can got deeper waves there now. That's even, that's really cool. So if you want to add like, um, even like on top of this wave thing, we can actually add, um, let's see what we can do here. We've got a dynamic paint, corrective smooth. Let's turn that off for a second and add uh, an ocean modifier. I'm going to turn off generate and say displace. So you already got water there on the ocean modifier. So if you want to add like an ocean and then have uh, a, a boat go through the ocean. Let's see how that works. Oh, we have to animate that wave as well. So let's animate that wave. So we can actually animate the waves here to make sure you know, that ocean modifier is working all right. You can change the depth as well, if you want to as well. So make the chop the scale larger, like so. So we're gonna get this going on and that's probably a bit too, um... uh, sorry, I just read the, uh, read the chat. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm glad it's working out for so many people. I've seen people's examples as well, and I'm actually really surprised at how effective it's been for everyone. Um, so thank you for watching and thank you for trying it out. I'm really happy it's working for you guys. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are sharing it as well. Um, and joining me today, of course, um, it's really cool to see you guys are keen to watch me do crazy, stupid shit on, on uh, Twitch here. <laughs> so let's uh, change, um, the depth there and make the smallest wave small. Let's make the choppiness. Uh, let's just go with that. All right, cool. Let's just keep it simple. We'll add some time, uh, a, a keyframe to that and we'll add another keyframe down here. So we get some animation into that, uh, that wave. So we're stacking modifiers now. So we're going to get some uh, motion in the wave there. Let's check this out. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it will work, but boom. How cool is that? With the water, it's so cool. So you got waves and, um, uh, you know, ripples coming from a character or from a, an object. Um, really, really easily out of that water. So you got, without any real um, ocean simulation, no, no, no liquid simulation, we're getting some really cool results out of this. Um, this setup here. So again, this is all about experimenting this channel um, because uh, it's just easier this way and it's fun. So uh, I haven't done this before either. I'm just making this shit up as I go along. So um, yeah, uh, the fact that this worked straight out of, out of the door for me, I'm actually really surprised. And I kind of wish I, I thought of this when I was doing a job I was doing a few months ago. <laughs> I had a really complicated water sim going on with that, but now it's like, oh shit, really simple. Yeah, I could have used it as well. Like, I, I just figured this out just now. Um, so, uh, it's just really about playing with the this, the uh, the modifier stack and just uh, seeing how you can uh, make things work together. All right, so with that in mind, um, let's uh, move on and let's try and make something um, Actually, let's try and do, uh, let's combine these together. So we're going to combine these together into an environment and we're going to do that tank example I did before. So this tank example here, let's see, where's my tank example? Let's grab this tank example that I've got here, but have a tank go through some snow and then go through some water. How cool will that be? So we're going to have it um, go through an environment this time around. So we have to make up a new file. Well, we can use what we've got here actually. So we could actually set it up this way because you, you can work with, um, you don't need to have just have flat planes here. We can actually turn it into an actual environment here. So I'm going to de delete the keyframes on this. Just clear all the keyframes. 
and I'm going to sort of turn this into an environment that could uh, sort of work together. So let's um let's, turn, let's sort of overlap these together. I'm gonna scale that and then apply the scale. And I might make it less choppy this time, so less depth. Maybe uh, 50 meters, maybe that will make a difference. Doesn't really make a difference there. Uh, we can change the size. Ah, oh, that, that's actually working out pretty good there. We can make the choppiness less and the scale a little bit less. So I just want to have a little bit of water uh, ripples in there. Make the smallest wave as small as possible. Um, and we'll keep it... Oh, I got established ocean as well. Shallow water. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. So we have, we're going to have um, some just very simple shallow water there. And we'll change the um, the choppiness a little bit to a bit less, or scale to a little bit less, like so. So I'm just going to have a little bit of water in there, like that. And then we can have, um, let's see, let's add, we'll scale this one up as well. And we'll apply that scale. And we'll just turn that off for now. We're just going to turn off all that animation and, and uh, all that sort of stuff just for now. And then let's sculpt in some hills. Sculpt mode. So let's add in some uh, some hills here. I've got mirroring turned on, by the way, so that's why I'm getting that effect. So imagine we have... Um, like a tank coming over a hill and then going into the water. That'd be kind of cool. I can turn off X mirror as well, just to, uh, let's see, turn that off. Just gonna add some more detail to this thing. Uh, tablet's not plugging in. Is it responding today? No. All right, I'll just use my mouse for now. Uh, so let's have a go. Let's add some more detail here. Let's make it look like a real hill. That looks cool. And then let's uh, smooth that out just a little bit. Make it look a little bit more natural. All right, cool. So this is like going to be like a uh, like mud, it could be like actual mud in, in the in the in the, uh, the terrain there. And then we have our, our water there as well. And our cube's still there, so we can still use that guy. But we're going to turn this into a tank. Let's turn this into a tank and see how we can go with this. So I'm going to save this. So let's uh, scale this up. I'm going to turn this into a little tank model. All right, scale that up. We're going to uh, elongate that a little bit. Let's uh, grab these guys and scale those ones in. Might turn on soft select as well and make it linear. That way it will be nice and a linear sort of tank shape, I guess. Let's just go with that. That'll do, fuck it. Um, and just because we can, we'll just uh, scale in the bottom bit there as well to make it look a bit more boxy like that. There we go. Scale that up. Now let's uh, add a little turret on top. So let's add a little another uh, object. So cursor to selected, go out of edit mode and then select a new, let's go with a sphere actually, let's make a sphere. There we go. Let's add another one. And I'm not modeling anything fancy here. I'm just going with an experimental sort of shape. So when you're doing this sort of stuff, it's a really good idea to uh, keep things nice and simple. So you can like, 
uh, keep the performance nice and fast, but also, um, <laughs> I was tempted to make an ATAT -AT earlier, but I had to, I would have had to rig it and animate it. So it would have been a pain in the ass, but I did download one. I'll show you. I downloaded one. I downloaded an ATAT. -AT. Um, but, uh, yeah, the rig wasn't quite up to scratch, but you can get them for free. Not lying. There it is. <laughs> I was planning on using it, but the rig wasn't ready for it. I would have done a walk cycle or something, but uh, not quite there yet. Maybe next time. But let's uh, add a turret. Add a cylinder. I'm going to scale that in. Scale it up again. Scale it down. And just put it there like so. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna um, just gonna apply that scale as well. All right, so there's our little tank. That'll do, and then we have to add some uh, wheels to this thing. And hopefully we can get the rig to work uh, with rotation, because uh, the method I know of um, doesn't quite work with rotation, but that's okay. I'm just gonna join this together. Fuck it, join it. And now it's time to add some. Um, some you know tracks to this thing so let's add some tracks so i'm going to go to uh reset my cursor to this object cursor to select it oops let's just reset that um the origins as well origin to geometry yeah uh here's a nice new feature with um blender if you go to origins in the uh move options you can change the origins manually and have something that is more geared to uh, you know, where you want that pivot point to be. So it's very similar to Maya in that regard, how, how you can like uh, realign that uh, the origin point that way. Makes life a little bit easier. And just make sure you turn that off afterwards as well. All right, so let's add a, uh, a, new, pl a new cube. Oh, classic. Did I add it in the wrong spot? Oh wait, I gotta add it here. Uh, Cursor to selected, so uh, sh shift S, cursor to selected, there we go, that's better. Now let's get rid of that, uh, let's bring that that uh, plane back down, selection to cursor, selection to cursor, there we go. And I'm just going to isolate selection there, and I'm going to make a tank track. So a tank track, like so, and I might... Um, Thicken that up, so I'm just going to extrude that up like that. All right, and let's um, give it some detail. So I'm just going to add some edge loops there, and let's uh, extrude out some track-like features as well. Uh, not enough loops. Let's go with uh, one, two, three. I think that will do. One, two. Three. Yeah, that'll do. One, two, three, and extrude that down. So I'm gonna turn this into a tank track. And you can't see anything at the moment, but that's all right. So I'm just gonna move that across here and place it down at the bottom here, just temporarily. And then I'm gonna go and add cur uh, cursor to selected, and I'm gonna add a curve. In this case, a circle and scale that up, apply the scale, rotate it in the Y to get our tank track and make that a bit bigger and apply the scale. Then I'm going to grab these in edit mode, these, uh, these curves, and I'm going to scale that down. So I'll get something similar to a tank track like so. All right, we're almost there. So we're going to grab this, um, our tank track, and I might have to rotate this up actually. I'm going to rotate this, uh, rotate along the X 180. So the tank tracks are fa is facing upwards. And then I'm going to add a array. Oops, wrong object. An array on this object here. So let's add an array. And I'm going to turn off the offset on the X and go with the Y. And switch that to one for now. 
And then we're going to add a, um, let's see if it could, let's see if that's working. No, that's not going to work. We're going to go fix cat for now. And we're going to add it to a track and go to fit curve. I think that will work. If that doesn't work, that's okay. And then we're going to go and add a curve modifier and have it follow the curve. That didn't quite work. So we have to switch it from X to, let's say something else. Let's just turn that off. Fix count. I need to make sure that I'm doing this in the right direction. Uh, let's see. So it's not quite going in the right direction at the moment. Let's see how I've set it up in the original tank. So in my original tank, I had an array, fixed count, and then the curve on the X. All right, let's see if this works for us. If it doesn't work, we'll figure it out. Let's make sure we count, fixed count again. Let's go to here, fixed count and set that to what we need to set it to. Check that to one. And we need to make sure we got the right, make sure we got the rotation set up as well. Make sure you apply the rotation. And here we go, I think we're getting there. Now we have to choose the right orientation. Make sure that's rotated as well properly. Let's see. What's going on here? I have a feeling I know what's going on. It's because we need to center this. So Alt G, let's see what happens. When we do that. Here we go. I think we're getting there. Minus Y. There we go. That worked. So we need to have, we have to like center the, uh, the object first, obviously. So now that's working out. And you may have noticed that's all stretched out and that's because of the radius of the curve. So we need to actually bring down the radius of the curve. So let me just hide those into a new collection for now, land. Oops, I moved that to the wrong one as well. So let's go to our land and bring back our our plane there. So to make this, this right scale, <laughs> hey dude uh, to make this the right scale we have to go into edit mode into our um, our curve here and then push alt s to bring down that scale to something more appropriate like that all right so there we go that's working out now we just have to elongate that track a little bit further with some extra count like that and then we can just sort of manipulate our offset to sort of match the count there. So that will kind of do, I think. Yeah, that'll do, fuck it. So now if we control the, um, the Bezier circle, we're getting that kind of action. But if we rotate it, we're gonna get a broken, it's gonna break, uh, which is unfortunate. So we need to figure out how we can uh, have this rotate with the the, uh, the tank. But um, for now, let's uh, let's roll with that. So we're going to uh, grab this set up here and duplicate. We're going to sort of put it aside because if you if you if you move if you select them both at the same time and they're in the same position as one another, they will move together and they won't uh, fuck up. So we can actually select both of those, duplicate it, and then move it across. So now we have two of the same sort of setup here. One bezier there. Oops. One bezier there. One bezier there. All right. So let's try and figure this out. Let's uh, grab this tank. Try and scale it up. We'll bring this one aside a little again. So it sort of sits together. 
All right, so let's make these Beziers for now a child of our our tank object. So we're just going to push Control, set parent to object, and see what happens when we move it. All right, so now that we've selected the tank, the tank's moving. Unfortunately, our wheels aren't moving with it very well. But maybe there's some options inside the curve modifier. Maybe not. Uh, we'll figure it out. Let's bring back the land objects. Oops. The problem is as well, if we um, parent these objects to the tank as well, the tracks, oops, the tracks won't move with it. So we go uh, object keep transform. They don't move to get, they won't uh, animate anymore because uh, because uh, both the, the um, the Beziers are a child as well. So if we unparent that, clear parent, keep transformation for now. The tank will move, but then this, they won't move with the sphere. So we have to figure out that uh, um, that puzzle uh, momentarily. But let's bring back the land. And give this a go. So we're going to add now. Let's add the... Um, let's add the dynamic paint. So we're going to add a dynamic paint, go into the options and turn it into a brush, add a brush. And we're going to uh, add a uh, mesh volume plus proximity as our option. And we'll have uh, depth change to uh, be greater than one maybe. Can we do that more? We can, two. All right, and that should work. That's all good. Let's add uh, the same thing to this one. So because the dynamic paint is going to happen after the array, every track meant piece will actually mop follow with it. All right. And yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this one so far. It's going well. It's going well so far. Um, in this case, we might not be able to get the tank up and running going over the hill like with some uh, motion, but we'll try but we can have it just steamroll through the hill and uh, displace that at least. So we'll, we'll give that a go. So if you have an option, if you have um, a, the plugin copy attributes, you can actually copy the attributes from this one here. So I'm just gonna copy that modifier, oopsie. Copy, select the modifiers and dynamic paint. And then we have it on this object here and we should have the same options, but maybe not. We'll add the brush, add the factor to two, and we'll change it again to mesh volume and proximity. Let's turn on the uh, dynamic paint here and here. Make sure it's all turned on. All right, so that's all turned on. The ocean's turned on. We can animate that ocean again. So let's add some uh, some motion there. Oh, I guess we had some uh, scale on that ocean by accident. Okay, P fame, and then we're going to quickly make sure that it's a linear motion there. So Shift E, make linear, and this one has some keyframes on there. So let's make that smaller. Turn that off. And apply the scale. All right, cool. Now let's animate this tank going through. Our setup, like so. Let's see what happens. All right, so the water's working. We've gotten some uh, displacement into the um, dynamic paint there. Let's turn off the uh, smooth, corrective smooth there. And the reason why nothing's happening on the top is because the, uh, the hill is too... Uh, it's too tall. It's not follow. It's uh, the uh, the tracks are too big. So let's just shrink that down a little bit. <clears throat> so it sits below the um, the tracks there. Ah, that looks pretty cool. We can make those waves even stronger if you want to as well. Turn off that. Let's go into the dynamic paint there and turn on, uh, let's see. 
in the surface here. Oh yeah, the ocean modifier is mad. It's an awesome, uh, an awesome uh, little uh, thing. Let's add uh, influence. Let's see with the uh, the waves. Let's go with um, less dampening. So the tank's not affecting it because I haven't got a dynamic paint applied to the tank. So yeah, that's right. The uh, so. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, the reason why the tank body is not affecting it is because um, we haven't got one on there. But we can add one very easily. Just go to Modifier, Dynamic Paint, give it a brush, add the brush, and we're going to switch it to Mesh and Proximity. Let's go to that and see what happens. So now it's just steamrolling through that, <laughs> that hill. So if you wanted it to be snow, it's perfect for that. The weird thing is that the um, because the uh, the tank wheels aren't like a solid object. The reason why the tank like, we haven't got any solid like objects inside that tank there, we can um, we need to uh, add some volume in there so it like can cut through uh, a thicker piece there. So, but first, instead of me trying to figure out the um, the displacement here, the, the problem with the um, the wheels. So I'm just going to release the parent on those tank wheels so we can get some actual motion there. So now those are going to work all right. Let's try and add um, We'll add some solid, like solid pieces into the side there, so it actually cuts through the um, the, the terrain there as well. So uh, we'll grab this, press to selected, maybe not there, but here, press to selected, and let's add some. Actually, we can just do it inside of this object here. So I'm just going to add um, a cylinder. Let's see. Uh, Let's see how we can make that object really easily. There, I'm just making. I'll make a new cube. I'm just gonna make a new cube. I'm just gonna put that on the side there, just for now, in edit mode. I'll do it in edit mode this time. Edit. Let's uh, scale that up in the Y. Yeah, I know how to do this. It's gonna be easy. Uh, okay, so we're just going to get that, that action going on. And then I'm just going to uh, thicken that up on the X a little bit. And yeah, it's, it's super cool dynamic paint, by the way. Uh, it's so much fun to use. And we're going to bevel that. Boom. Nice and easy. And then we're going to add more divisions. One, two, three. That should do the job. Let's get that uh, clamp overlap turned on so it doesn't overlap and we'll have something like that. Cool. And I might just scale that down a little bit. So we get something a bit solid there. And we'll just make sure that there's no overlapping um, overlapping vertices. There was. Turn that off. And we'll add a mirror modifier to this one instead. So add a modifier mirror like that. Um, and then we'll add a dynamic paint on that. Add canvas, not canvas, sorry, move canvas, brush, volume plus proximity. And we're going to parent this, um, this object to the tank as well. Keep transform. Now let's see how this goes. Uh, that cuts right through now. It's getting there. And we can change the uh, the strength of this displacement here to like, I don't know, two or three. So let's go three. 
and that looks a lot better now. Make that two. Let's see what happens. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, the terrain is still a bit too tall for that that to get the full uh, action going on, so we need to uh, shrink that down a little bit. And I'm going to apply the scale there as well, just so we have something so like a kind of solid. There we go. <laughs> now that's really displacing a bit too much now, but uh, let's have a look. Let's see how. And that's because the tank is too high up. Uh, too too low in the ground, but uh, let's try and rise that. Let's try and rise that tank up. Unfortunately, it's affecting the um, the curvature on the offset there. But let's try and fix that. So we've select the uh, both both the tank and the um, the the wheels, and that should work. Yeah, that should work fine. Ah, fuck, forgot to uh, change the height on those objects. So, um, those ones are fine. Let's make sure we have removed those keyframes on those uh, those tank tracks by accident without... So we don't affect those. Select the tank. Let's make the height a bit lot higher. Yeah, it's really fun, huh? It's really cool. Uh, just to answer your question, yeah. Uh, your comment, rather. Yeah, it's super cool to see like how you can like dynamically have like that sort of mud effect. And I'm going to keyframe the height there as well. Make sure that's okay. And in my uh, graph editor, just delete that keyframe and that should be fine. Now uh, let's say have a good go at this now. That looks really cool. And depending on your angle, of course, you can um, you can play with the way that the water is revealed or not. But um, that would be a bit tricky to pull off. But uh, we can make this a bit lower on the uh, the water there. So um, let's sculpt in just to make it look like a bay. So we're just gonna have it like lo lower down into the water like that. And that looks even more natural now. Let's have a go at that. So imagine if you were making a film or an animation that had this sort of thing and now that you've worked out all the um, the physical stuff like the tank tracks and the, um, the displacement and all that sort of thing, now you can start to think about how we're going to fix up the uh, rotation on those on those tank tracks and then that becomes a much simpler uh, puzzle to solve rather than the whole thing. So let's uh, change the displacement to like uh, just underneath the tank tracks this time. Like that, that should be fine. Another cool thing is that you can actually have it dissolve. So you can actually have it dissolve over time. So as you watch it, watch it this time now, it will actually um, it will happen and then it will kind of fade back to, to default. So if you want to do animated loops, or if you had like a certain like a um, if you had like a uh, you know a, a liquid that one like a like a an oil or something that would just sort of seep back into the um, terrain, that's really cool as well. I love the ripples in the water. It's so cool. So now we just have to light this thing and give it like a little bit of an effect. So let's just let's like, let's give this some um, a nice little scene to be lit up to. So we're gonna make it look like a yeah you know, a nice cool scene basically. So in the uh, camera settings, I'm getting clipping there. So I'm just gonna go into my camera settings, and this is nowhere near real world scale by the way. This is um. If you're doing this properly, you would have it at the proper scale, but uh, we're just fucking around today, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to change that to a thousand meters with the clipping end. <laughs> uh, thanks for the uh, the positive reactions there. 
So we got our tank. Let's see if we can turn into into some sort of water. And then we get some really nice effect there, by the way, with the water now. Um, let's fix our camera like so. Let's turn it into an Instagram post, huh? We'll change the camera settings to, um, you know, 1,800, 1,080 by 1,080. Let's see, uh, print. 1080 and we can turn it into a little like a little cartoony sort of uh, diorama of sorts we can add a solidify on that after the fact so add a solidify get that water looking nice and thick I could probably add it on top so we'll just add it on the top of everything that way it will uh, won't be affected by the dynamic paint, I don't think. There we go. <laughs> we can add a solidify onto this one as well, on top of the dynamic paint, so just add a solidify. And it's just sort of get it into that same parameter. like that and we can clean this up we'll clean this up with a boolean or something uh, to answer your question about doing animal retopo um, it's, it's just about really studying the um, what you should do is just study the um, the different uh, the, an the anatomy of the animal so when you think about like a, a dog or a, or, a, or a cat or something, the actual anatomy is not that different to a human when you think about the uh, evolution of it. But um, it's just about uh, redirecting the way that the shoulders are constructed and the way that the legs are constructed. So the, the, the redirection of the hips and the redirection of the scapula are really what really matters. Um, but the, um, <laughs> that's my girlfriend, not my girlfriend, it's my wife's um, keyboard. She got a new keyboard. So, um, see, uh, she loves the tappy keyboards. Um, and she's doing some research at the moment. So, uh, yeah, she's tapping away. Um, but yeah, uh, with the answering the, um, to answer your question about anatomy and, uh, retopo on uh, a creature, just think about the anatomy of the animal and, uh, the way that you constructed it with like a regular human character and then sort of think of a way of um basically uh redirecting the loops around the especially around the um the shoulder point and the um the hips that's the main area the head should be the same uh topology relatively speaking obviously with a snout to be different but um to uh but uh otherwise the actual edge flow should be fairly similar you're gonna have like uh the same sort of loops around the torso the same sort of loops around the legs um Obviously, the toes on the, on the on the paws and stuff will be a little bit different, but otherwise, not that that far from just having a bunch of cylinders, really. All right, so let's clean up this uh, this area here with a bit of booleans. So we're gonna add a a fancy pants boolean on the edge here to make it look nice and clean. So we're going to grab a uh, cube and make a little pool. So just a little pool like that. Scale it up. And we're going to uh, basically just create a uh, container. So I'm going to invert that. I inset, sorry. And then we're going to sort of just scale it into fit our little scene there. And this will be a Boolean objects basically. So that will be kind of cool. We don't have to worry about the back. So we're not going to see it in the camera. Let's make that look nice and clean. And I'm being pretty rough here. I don't need to be too precise. I just want to cut off the edges there. All right. So that's our, our Boolean object. And we're going to make this non-renderable. So we're not going to see this at, when we render it. And we're going to just turn on wireframe in the viewport. Visibility. 
Let's go to, um, let's see, viewport display and turn on wire. That way I can see it. And in edit mode, I can see that it's not quite overlapping yet. So I'm just gonna get that going there. And then I'm gonna grab this object and add another modifier. In this case, a Boolean and add a difference. And I'm gonna chop it off and that, how, look, look how clean that looks now. Ooh, it runs like shit. It runs like shit, but it looks so much nicer now. <laughs> and we could turn that off and on as we need to, but uh, that's basically how you get a nice clean um, sort of cut for rendering, and that looks really nice. We're getting a bit of uh, uh, Z-planing there, Z-planing there because of the um, the uh, the overlap on the mesh there. So we can actually make that a little bit, uh, we can actually use a separate mesh for that one. So I'm gonna duplicate that and just scale that in a little bit. And that will become the um, cube two. There we go. That way we can actually just get a little bit more, uh, less Z plating going on there. And I'm just gonna scale that just a little bit. So it overlaps like so. All right, cool. Let's try and render this thing now. So we've got about five minutes to get this thing rendering. So let's add a uh, HDRI. I'm just gonna use a random studio environment. So environment texture. Open, let's go to uh, boss man, because I have a, I know I have a thing in there. So texture, studio, boom. I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion in the EV settings so we can get some ambient occlusion going on. I wanna add a uh, water to this uh, mesh here. Let's see if we can add a transmission. Let's make that look a bit more like water. Screen space refraction, turn that on. We're going to go into our render settings, turn on a bunch of stuff, refractions. So we can see the water. Let's see how that how that renders. Looking a little bit shitty, but you know, what are you gonna do? Turn on, uh, we're gonna turn on, actually let's add a, um, Let's add a, a, a plane in the background, just for a background color. I'm just gonna go abstract here. Just so I have like a, a fun color going on. And I'm gonna add an emission. Let's go with, uh, I don't know. Let's go with orange or red. That look cool. And the reason why we're getting that Z plating there is partly because of the screen space, um, the screen space uh, effects there. So we have to play with the um, the way it, it handles that sort of stuff in the in the render settings. But um, otherwise, it's uh, also just because it's so close to one another. Let's add some mud. And the cool thing, the thing we did last week with the uh, the shader, we can actually do it with the here as well. So if we go to our, um, we go to our material settings, shader, and add a uh, separate X Y Z, add a ramp, and we're gonna go with Z ramp, like so. This should work pretty good in the XYZ. And we got to change it to object as well. Object, I think that will do it. Yep, there we go. Now we can have mud and grass. So we're going to add some mud. And we'll add some green grass. Let's just change the way that it handles that. And here's a cool thing. So let's see how this looks when we uh, play it back. Obviously it's running really slow because of that Boolean. 
But let's see how it affects the shader. Uh, how cool is that? <laughs> Mad. And then it goes back again. How cool is that? Let's make that water a bit more aqua. And we're going to increase the roughness, maybe? Oh, the rough getting rid of that roughness helped a lot. And we'll just play with the settings here to get a bit more nicer effect. But otherwise, let's uh, t give this tank a different color. Let's give it a, just give it a cartoony color. Like a toy-like color. Add some tracks. Oops, wrong material. And we can give this a little bit of a, a little bit of personality as well, just so with a, um, an AO pass, just to really bring up those details a little bit. Ramp. This is my cheap and dirty method for doing, um, like getting a little bit of shadowing into the, uh, into the, uh, the, the objects I create in Eevee. That looks a bit nicer. There we go. We can even add a bullet. We can even add like a, a bevel to this thing as well. So we can um, make it look a little bit shiny. That looks better. Cool. And we can do, add the same material to those little areas there. And we could just play with that and get it looking a bit cartoony and a bit fun and there we go let's play that back well let's get a render in actually let's just push render and see what happens so we're getting a bit of z planing there z planing but otherwise it's uh looking pretty good and we can fix that with a bit of sculpting so if we go to our yeah, I would yeah, it's it's a simple, easy, it's a dirty trick really. It's not really a shadows. It's just a dirty trick. <laughs> My lazy trick for uh, getting shadows in there. And this is the cool thing about modifiers. You can always go in and edit your sculpt or edit your mesh to uh, you know to your liking. So I'm just going to uh, I'm going to smooth that out. I want to get rid of that Z planing. And I might go into edit mode and just pull that down with a soft select. Like so. And get that going. There we go. That looks better. Let's play that back before we wrap up for the day. And I'll, uh, uh, everyone give me a thumbs up if I, if I think I should upload this thing, by the way. Should I upload this online? Should I put it on YouTube for a future, future reference? Um, you guys can be the judge. So you reckon this is wor YouTube worthy? Yeah. Yes, save it up. Upload it after this mesh, this uh, sesh. All right, cool. Well, I'll upload it um, either tonight or uh, tomorrow. All right, sick. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to upload and what not to upload. So um, yeah, so as long as you guys enjoy this little this little experiment, uh, I'll upload them. If they're if they're shit experiments, I won't upload them. <laughs> But yeah, this is our this is our uh, our uh, quick little experiment to do uh, dynamic paint with waves and mud. We got uh, collisions, we got booleans and fun materials. Um, yeah, so we're getting some really fun stuff out of this. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, I had a lot a lot of fun doing this. Um, 
I kind of thought up of the idea last week uh, when we were doing the dynamic paint. Uh, well, when I came up with the dynamic paint solution for the planet. But uh, I, I wanted to think of some other interesting ways to sort of show off how dynamic paint works. And this is just one of those as well. Um, but yeah, we've come into the hour. We've uh, done quite a bit for one hour. And I think, um, I think it's a good time to wrap up. <laughs> no worries, man. No worries. Um, I, I'm, I hope you enjoyed this stream. Um, I'm hoping to uh, pimp out my OBS a little bit uh, in the next couple of days because uh, obviously I can't just have OBS hogging half the screen for uh, for every tutorial. I want you guys. I want to. I want the audience to see what the um, what the chat is doing. Oh, go for it. Uh, we're into character texturing now, so um, if you if you get a character done, you'll be able to jump right into texturing. And um, um, and again, I'm. I'm I'm also making up the, the texturing stuff as I go along. So I came up, I found a, uh, a sweet plugin to make life easier for uh, making textures today. So um, I'll probably uh, talk about that in the tutorials as well. All right, so I think this will be it for today. I got a bunch of shit to do for the rest of the afternoon. So I'll, uh, I'll let you guys go. And uh, hint, hint, it's uh, the next tutorial for uh, <laughs> uh, texturing. So um, we're gonna talk about uh, blocking out, um, blocking out uh, the colors for your skin tones and stuff like that without really having to paint anything. So, yeah, that's going to be a really interesting video. And uh, thank you for joining me. It's been an awesome stream. And uh, thank you for uh, supporting the channel. Thanks for uh, watching my videos. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that it's all working out for you guys. So uh, thank you again. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. <laughs>